On this edition of NSFW, a very special one, we are joined by life coach Tijuana Jackson. Folks, we have a lot of fun on this episode, but we also go over some of the uncensored realities of life, emotional torment, and physical pitfalls of mind and spirit. Also, musical guest Adam Hackey plays a medley of wrestling themes. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 77 for May 24th, 2011. The science of triumph. This episode of NSFW brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies streamed to your PC, Mac, or TV instantly. Plus, get DVDs by mail in about one business day. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. And by squarespace.com. The fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free 14-day trial, go to squarespace.com slash NSFW. And be sure to check out their annual plans for savings of up to 20% off. SFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the Webernet, the show that's nominally safe for work. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, joined as always by my inimitable co-host, my BFF, my separated Siamese twin. It's none other than Professor Justin Robert Rubles the first, Mr. J R Y W T F L O L. Uh, Brian, you want to know what? Normally I would come in and I'd give everybody a flowery explanation of our guest, but really, if you paid any kind of attention to the life coaching area of society over the past five to 10 years, then really our guest needs no introduction for those unenlightened. Ladies and gentlemen, I simply say to you, introducing Tijuana Jackson. Tijuana, welcome to the show. Hey, Brian, Justin, I really want to say thank you to both of you. Um, first of all, I enjoy your program. And if you don't, you need to follow at NSFW show on Twitter. Okay, yeah. that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing is, is that I really enjoy the show. I think you guys are incredible gentlemen, incredible hosts. I think that Brian has got to be one of the craziest people I've ever known in my life. I don't know what he does to get his head to maintain that position, but I can tell you right now, in certain states, that's considered a weapon. I was about to say, you know, the biggest thing, I'm not going to say exactly what the formula is, but I feel very ashamed for two or three days afterwards each time I get my hair up. Now, here's the thing. For those, most people, now, I understand, you, I know your story. Justin knows your story. But yeah. most people don't realize there's a lot of hucksters and fakers out there calling themselves life coaches. But they don't have, they don't, they, they're scam artists. They don't have, they don't have one-tenth the life experience that you have to be able to coach. How did you come? Tell us real quickly about your journey and how you came to this position in your life now. Okay, well, first off, I'll start by saying I'm an ex-convict turned motivational speaker, okay? And what basically happened was the gas prices that went up and it got busted siphoning some gas out of the school bus, okay? And then when the cops called me- Happens it was to the best of us. Hey, it was a misdemeanor at first, but then, you know, I was also smoking a cigarette, therefore endangering the lives of the kids that were still on the bus, and that's how I ended up in prison, right? So while I okay. was in prison, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, no, I was going to ask. So, okay, so you got, uh, obviously, it was a good collection of circumstances, uh, some beyond your control, some just, you know, maybe, maybe poor decisions at the time, but you find yourself at that moment and the judge sends you to jail. What's going through your head at that moment? What, what, what is the next chapter in your life? Well, for me, going to jail really wasn't no thing because I was in and out of juvie as a, from a kid. You know, when I was eight years old, my uncle tried to get my ass while I was asleep, but I caught him. It took about seven hours of surgery to get my foot out of his larynx, you know. What he didn't know was when I was a kid, I was real paranoid, so I sleep with my shoes on. So for me, going back in the joint wasn't no thing. What it really was was I realized I was just you know, contributing to this pattern. You heard me? So I wanted to get out of this pattern, you know what I'm saying? Because I was sick of Peter Piper picking peppers, heard me? You know, every time I turned yeah. around, Peter Piper got to pick peppers, you know what I'm saying? So what I did was I picked up this book, I started reading this book, and next thing you know, I found myself 
enlightening a lot of the people that I was cellmates with, you know? What, and what, what I, was the book? Yeah, 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 yeah I'm, I'm asking to you, what, what were you reading? Well, basically, it's the book that I've now named my seminar after. It was titled, What You See Is What You Saw. Okay, and, and, who, and who wrote it? So, so who would you define as your, as your major influences, especially in this kind of uh, life coaching realm? My major influences came from a gentleman by the name of Dr. Maxwell Maltz, okay? Um, he okay. wrote a book called psycho in 1959. And what the book basically explained is that every last one of us are the spitting image of, of how we see ourselves to be. So what that basically means is, it's simple as this, the lines in your face, the stretch marks you have that make you look like a zebra walking through, a, uh, through traffic in a G-string, all those things are, believe it or not, concocted in your own mind, and then you become the immaculate conception of that. Now, what's messed up about it, okay, it's yeah. just simple that a lot it of sounds great so far. Yeah, but that self-image a lot of times is not the self-image you've chosen for yourself. It's in, it's a self-image that was imposed upon you by your parents and your parents' parents and your parents' parents' parents. You see what now, I'm saying? Now, hold on, so, uh, I, Tijuana, uh, Tijuana, are you telling me that 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 you can can you change your self-image if I picture myself, if I see myself as taller or stronger or more attractive or with less ridiculous hair? these things can actually come to come to be absolutely absolutely look look i'm not i'm not here to sell dreams okay these are these are simple facts i'll just give you a quick quick example in 1968 a little okay. patient blonde-haired white girl out of Metairie, louisiana went up to her mom and said mama i want to dance like a black woman and get laid like a black man okay <laughs> now if she had said that to you you would have laughed ellen DeGeneres said watch me Huh? Okay. There we go. <laughs> so it's to show you, it's to show you that the possibilities are there. But the problem is, is that our self-image that we've committed to is so ingrained in us that a lot of times we don't know the difference between what we truthfully see ourselves as and what we've been taught to see ourselves as. For instance, if you grow up and your dad tell you you're an idiot, guess what? You grow up believing you're an idiot. Hence, yeah, Brian. Hence Donald Trump. Well, there we go. Listen, so uh, you said before, and, and listen, we're going to get into these questions uh, all through the day. If you follow either me, Justin, or Young on Twitter, or Brian at Schwood on Twitter, uh, we've solicited your questions, and we are going yes. to get to uh, as many as we can uh, with, sure. with Mr. Tijuana Jackson. Certainly. And I just want to say, I'm a real life coach, okay? Most of my clientele come off the internet, but you can still reach me directly at 310 Three six three seven one four five. That's a real life coach number. You call me, okay? As long as you are a follower, I'm going to ask you. My assistant will ask you first off when you call, are you a follower? If you don't yeah. follow me, I'm not going to ask you a question, okay? And, but and if of course, people can follow you on Twitter at Tijuana Jackson, right? Tijuana Jackson. You can get me on Facebook. You can also get me on YouTube. i tell you what, okay? Because I'm yeah. in a good mood. This is the thing, okay? I'll tell you what. You want to win one of these nifty T-shirts right here, these Tijuana oh, Jackson T-shirts. And, and, and by the way, for those for those everybody who is listening to this uh, uh, on on the audio version of the podcast, uh, you know it is it is a great. It's an off color. It's a it's a gray shirt with a a fine picture of you, uh, Tijuana, I, smoking I, I a said, cigarette, and, and, and I don't and discriminate. I, I also have the girl tees. Okay, so don't we don't discriminate. But listen, you can't win it if you ain't a follower. You can follow me on my YouTube channel. You can call follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Facebook, okay? But if you don't follow me, anyone else, you don't stand to win. Simple. Right, no, no, real quick. Wait, wait, can I, can I, can I, I ask you guys one thing? So let's say I'm gonna, I call you up, and, and, uh, and, and your assistant asks you if you're, if, if you're a follower, and I say, no, uh, you know, I, I'm not really into this whole internet thing. I just heard that there was a man with sage advice. Well, what would you say? Would your assistant talk to me, or would you talk to me? Well, first of all, you never get to me, okay? Because we have our, <laughs> we have our followers in our database. I'm a very exclusive individual. I'm not sure if you see the, the news article, okay? But I just signed on as Antoine Dodson's life coach, okay? Well, there we go. So, all right, th that's just that's just confirmation that my is real, okay? So if you ain't following, guess what? I don't have nothing for you. Heard me? All right. All right. All so right. A a answer me this, TJ. Uh, I noticed when you held up the shirt, it said the science of triumph. Now, uh, I, I understand. Are, are you telling me that, that success itself is not a matter of luck meeting preparedness, but is rather something that you can conquer with a pre-planned plan of attack? It's a sci there's a science to triumphing. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. What I'm trying to show people is that it's not just about luck and chance. I'm trying to show people that you have to have a, a specific plan. The universe rewards specificity. So a lot of people, you ask somebody right now, I wish I could talk to one of your listeners right now because I'd ask them right up now, are you single? Okay, if you're single, what kind of man, what kind of woman would you like to be with? Do you aspire to be with? Okay, and uh, you know, and how many kids do you aspire to have? And you know, a lot of people cannot answer these questions because they're not being specific in their desires. Okay, do you, what, what do you want? Do you want, you know, do you want someone who watches Fox TV? Okay, or buffoon? Do you want, <laughs> you have to be specific. Yeah, indeed. All right, All right. Well, you want to know what? Let's let's get right into the questions here, uh, Tej. If you don't mind, this one uh, comes in from anonymous. I have a Canadian girlfriend. Uh, he says parenthetically, "Yes, I'm an '80s rom-com archetype." Uh, no, you haven't met her. Due to health problems, I cannot move to Canada ever. Should I move to the border or let her find somebody more accessible? Okay. So let me just make sure I understand this. Because of yeah. health problems, you cannot move to Canada. He cannot move to Canada. No, no. He apparently has a, a health condition that prevents him from going north of the border. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is you shouldn't be dating nobody if you, unless they're in quarantine with you, okay? Second okay. Of all, <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying... <laughs> Not like a good quarantine joke to break up the gas pride. Uh, but he's saying that you need to, you, they need to get in that sealed tent, uh, you know, to really have any kind of uh, relationship. No, to answer your question, honestly, I think one of the things I'd like to say is, first of all, you have to understand that you already know the answer to the question. I'm okay. just helping you to bring the, 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 the answer out, okay? Listen, sounds like there's a lot of distance between you and your girlfriend, okay? Uh, it sounds like, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you are you are considerably ill. Now, in my experiences, when I'm in a relationship, I can find myself taking care of the person that I'm with. Yeah, yes. I, I believe that your, your, your main priority today would be to take care of yourself if you can possibly rectify your health condition. And at that point, you may find yourself desiring a different dynamic in relationship. You understand? A lot oh, of times... So wait, I, I mean, it sounds like you're saying... Once he's healthy, she may not look so hot to him. Is that what I'm hearing? That's basically what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? It's like, look, man, when you a puppy, okay, I'm just being real. You know what I'm saying? When you a puppy, Preach. you know what I'm saying? You enamored by the guppy, okay? But once your balls drop, you know what I'm saying? Then you start looking at women. Heard me? Right, right. No, that makes that makes total sense. Hey, uh, before we take another question, I got to know. I got to know. I'm still fascinated with your backstory. I understand it must have been a harrowing. I, I would imagine it's harrowing. You don't seem that impressed going back to jail. But once you got out of jail, what was the moment that made you realize, and I, maybe I'm overstepping here, but was there a moment that made you realize, I don't want to be in and out of jail for life. I want to go and help other people to achieve their dreams. How did you come to that realization? Well, um, I had a very close call in which I almost had my manhood breached. And that was pretty much the waking call. I didn't realize that, you know what I'm saying, that it was a possibility for every individual in the joint, you know what I'm saying, to be um, accosted and treated under such hostile, you know, such a hostile I, nature. I, I, I assume you're, no. you're, you're, you're talking about some kind of uh, sexual misconduct behind bars. Is that what I'm understanding? You know, it's interesting. You're a very perverted individual. No, actually, I would, no, I'm sorry. I was actually speaking about the fact that when I, when I first got out of prison, my mother, you know what I'm saying, she couldn't afford to get her medication, and I couldn't afford to pay for it. And I felt as though my manhood had been breached. But I like the way I'm sorry. Talking. I'm sorry. I, I, well, I, I know. It's, really, it's interesting, have... Tijuana, that Brian's mind goes right there. Absolutely. Can, it, 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 there's no stop between point A and point B. It, 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 it's telling, yeah. though. Telling, though, yeah, right, yeah. Tijuana? But, but between He's the hairdo... Between the hairdo and the assumptions, it's clear that Brian's crying for help. Let us not ridicule this man, okay? Let us encourage him. Please, Brian, I'm here for you. Speak. Hey, well, thank you very much, DJ. I appreciate it. We have another one. This one comes from, uh, I'm not going to say who. It says, this is a real question. As a 43-year-old father of four that is savvy <laughs> and intelligent, do I follow my, he says, uh, synonym for manhood or my head? Heart is not an option. I found out last night for the first time that Einstein was quite the philanderer. My response is, right on, man, you did not waste your time. 
I'm done with the metrosexual super suck sucker shoes shoe wow. I don't know what that means. I don't want lib I don't want libertarian. I want libertine. Do I try to get ahead or get some ahead? Is the question that he has. Well, look, um, you know, as a very enlightened man by the name of Kanye West once said, when you chase one, the other one's getting away. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna say is by your description is get over yourself. Okay, okay. Hey. I'm you know, that's the first thing I'm going to say. The second thing I'm going to say is this. Look, okay, this is the age-old question. Ask yourself, just by a show of hands, just by a show of hands, I want everyone who is 100% satisfied with their current income to raise their hands. Please, show of hands. And keep your hands up. And if you are in the, if you are also living in the house of your dreams, put your hands up. Keep them up. Okay. Now, and if you are 100% happy and satisfied with the with state of affairs of your health, put your hands up. Okay. Now, now I want for, for, for the record, nobody's hands are up for everybody listening oh. to the audio version. <laughs> yeah, and if you're watching the chat room, it's nothing but crickets in the chat room. Nobody's oh, happy with their lives. Beautiful. And that's yes. what I'm about to say, is that if you are spending more time chasing it than you are getting your shit together, guess what, partner? You avoiding your f***ed up this, okay? That's the bottom <laughs> line. We can move on to the next one. There All we right. go. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, dude, you, you need to get that on a T-shirt there, Tijuana. That is, uh, that is words to live by. Look, man, we can chase women. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, we can chase women all day, okay? But the, 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 the point of the matter is, what are you avoiding? Look, it, to chase, you must run. And if you are running, what are you running from? You understand me? Yes. I'll tell you yes. what. I mean, certainly, I don't know. I mean, a manhood breach of some kind. Absolutely. Uh, this one... This one comes in from uh, from Aaron. Aaron writes to you, Tijuana. I have no idea what I want to do with my life. I feel like I have choice paralysis. I'm the kind of person who can just jump into something, figure it out, and end up doing well. I've had a variety of jobs all over the spectrum, from security officer to IT to web designer to sales, and I generally do great at whatever I end up trying. I love working on projects. However, I have such a variety of interests. It's not long before I put down whatever I started work on for a new idea that came up, and I can't break out of this cycle. I've told myself a million times that simple advice, you just pick something up and it doesn't matter, but I don't believe it. I come from a very blue collar family. When I graduate, I'll be the first to have a degree. We've never had all that much money. So what I choose to do has to be the right thing. And I can't afford to make big life mistakes. Do you have any words of wisdom for Aaron? Aaron, first of all, okay. First off, I want you to know that you can always call me, okay, at 310. Making sure you're writing it down. Three one. Yes. That's three one zero three Everybody six. Everybody, take, take, take the magic marker out. Scribble it on your hand right now. Absolutely. Three one zero three six three seven one four five. Okay. Let me just explain something to you. I want. I want to take the last part of your question first. Okay. You say big life mistakes. You can't afford to make any big life mistakes. Okay. That's a big part of the paralysis that you describe. Because if you okay. are afraid to make mistakes, guess what, Adam? You will never go anywhere. You're trapped in a box out of the fear of making a mistake. And the truth is, you ain't afraid of making a mistake. You're afraid of the ridicule accompanied by the mistake. And I'm willing to bet you that the ridicule or the pattern of ridicule is something you've endured throughout your childhood. That's the first thing I'm gonna say. Okay. Okay. Well, can I can I ask you something on that though? Because you mentioned before how you initially went to jail that you weren't afraid to siphon gas out of a mother hooting school bus. Uh, yes. Was that a problem for you that you were too willing to make mistakes? Wait. Hold on for one second. Hold on for one second. I'm getting a phone call. Hold on. Okay. Well, apparently. It's Tijuana Jackson's Life Management Systems. This is Tijuana Jackson's Life Management Systems. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, I was not afraid to siphon gas out of a school bus, but as I said, I had felt as if my, you know, I, I felt as if, you know, look, the, the situation was, it was a financial issue, okay? I mean, come on. Sure. Let's, let's not act as if, you know, we don't, we all see the videos, okay, with the people, with the actors in Africa, okay? We all see the videos with the actors in Africa, they be acting all poor to get your money, okay? Sure, we all, yeah. We all doing something. Now, I'm not saying there are poor people in Africa, but I'm saying, how the hell they afford the cameras? And if they did, 
<laughs> you can't deny Wait, the logic are you, are you, there. I'm sorry, are you accusing... Uh, uh, just so we're clear here, TJ, it sounds like you're accusing Africa of pulling hey, some hey, kind hey, of you scam see me or swindle. Interview, man? You don't see me doing the interview? Huh? Oh, Okay, well, look, man, I'm in the middle of my interview, and I really want to talk to you, homie, but you got to call me during business hours, heard me? I hear you. I said, okay, what's business hours? My business hours are online at the website, www.tijuanajackson.com. You see me talking to Brian and Justin, man. What's your name, homie? My name is Todd. I'll check out your online space and all that good stuff. And I need some real, like, vibe and fight. Okay. Well, look, we're going to get into it, but I really don't want to keep Justin and Brian waiting because, man, they really put their schedule aside to talk to a real mom. You know what I'm saying? And it's a, and it's, it's a family show, and I don't want to really keep the families waiting. Heard me? No, I, they're I, all I, here. I'll tell you what, TJ. What, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You go ahead. You talk to them. You go ahead and talk to these guys. We're going to take a quick moment to thank the people who make Scam School possible for the moment. I mean, NSFW possible for the moment. <laughs> Brian, listen, if you have you ever wanted to collect every time that you've misspoke on the show and made it into a website where people could easily find it, well, <laughs> I, have, I have a great thing. You can just go on to a squarespace.com slash NSFW and set up a site. Let's say act like uh, Brian's uh, miscues on NSFW.squarespace.com. Please that way you can go through. Please you go through and every time that you... Sure. Well, do you want to listen? This would be great for you as well. <laughs> See, you could you could go over there and uh, and every time that uh, Brian uh, you know misspelled somebody's name or or, or said something wrong or uh, plugged a scam school advertiser on NSFW, you can just get those clips on YouTube and put them on a very very easy to manage site, and it's gonna look great, right, Brian? It will be phenomenal. The templates that are built in are designed by high-end artists. They're so good that our friend of the show, Jeff Kanata, created a website, and he used the basic templates from Squarespace and got voted by uh, some website or other, I forget which one, but as one of the top 100 designs to be inspired by, and they didn't even know he was using one of the default Squarespace templates. You don't have to be in a CSS wizard. You don't have to know anything about HTML or any of that business. You just go to squarespace.com slash NSFW. And right now, you can make the website. Brian would appreciate it if Justin would stop mocking him. <laughs> squarespace.com. And just a picture of Brian saying, hey, bro, appreciate it if you didn't mock me on my own show, like live while we're on the air. And then it could be up for two weeks. I can show it to Justin, and then maybe he'll have something that gets through his thick skull that says that it hurts me when he mocks me live on the show. Uh, yeah, Brian, I could not agree more. Just go to squarespace.com slash NSFW. You don't need a credit card to sign up. And by the way, a lot of the, the sponsors on this show and a lot of other uh, you know, Twitch shows, sometimes like, like uh, you know, you, you already do it. You buy it. You support the show once. There's nothing more you can do. Squarespace.com loves it when you guys make silly sites that stay up for two weeks. And then, uh, you know, if you want to use it past then, you can. Go ahead. Sign up for a very, very cheap program. But let's say you wanted to set up uh, Brian uh, needs to understand that his mistakes make the ad reads better. Squarespace.com, uh, and and just leave it, let it lapse after two weeks, um, and then that's fine. They love it because you get to learn the tools, and when you really want to make a serious site, you'll know that Squarespace.com is the right option for you. Uh, yes, absolutely. And meanwhile, uh, that uh, look. Let's let's get back to. I believe Tijuana has just finished his very important phone call. Uh, which, by the way, I'm kind of impressed that they were able to get through to your cell phone. I was under the impression that when they called, they're going to talk to your people and that you were busy enough that you would have to, like, set up an appointment. I, I'm kind of surprised you would just even answer your own phone like that. What's up with that, Tijuana? Well, to be quite frank, you are my people, okay? This is the whole point of it, is that there's no hierarchy, okay? I am just as accessible as the next man, okay? That's one of the issues in the game right now is that we don't understand that the way we structure our you know what I'm saying? We make people feel like less than. The first step, man, to really, really healing humanity, okay, is treating people as equal. Even the you heard me? <laughs> hey, okay. words, uh, words sure. of wisdom. Gloria Steinem couldn't have said it better or her own, or their own mouth. Uh, this uh, next next uh, email comes in from Hayden. Tijuana Jackson's life management. Tijuana Jackson's life management systems. I'm in the middle of an interview. You don't, you don't understand that? Hit me on Twitter, man. 
Hit me on Twitter. Hit me on Facebook. I tell you what, actually, uh, should we go ahead and open it up? Can we tell our listeners right now, and not only our listeners live, but our listeners who catch this after the fact, uh, would now be a good time to have people actually tweet you at Tijuana Jackson with their live questions? Because if they're truly your people, then I'd imagine you'd want to hear their, their issues at all times, both Absolutely. during the show and afterwards. This is, this, is, this is my job, okay? This is my job. This is what I do. You, you can, you can, if you have a question, you can get me at Facebook dot com slash tj can help okay you can also hit me on twitter if your question isn't that long hit me on twitter at tijuana jackson okay and if you All need right. to you can submit a video at my youtube channel which is basically tijuana jackson you know what i'm saying either way i'm gonna hit you off with some with some knowledge okay you're gonna get your life right. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something about me, okay? This is this is all natural. I ain't jumping around on stage like no Tony Robbins trying to tell you to join my cult with no damn spray tan and a damn sure ain't finna fake no accent like Edgar Tony just to get on open. Matter of fact, open hush cancel anyway. All right. Hey, I just I, I just the facts, Brian. Uh, no, no, they are the facts, but but I'm, I can't I can't help but notice uh, some undertone. I mean, and and forgive me, I, I understand you're doing a lot of good for a lot of people, but I'm detecting like tones of hostility underneath. Is there something that you have against these other life coaches like your, your Tony Robbins or any of those, those life Man, pictures? It ain't, no, it ain't no hostility, Brian, okay? I'm just a real life coach, okay? I'm a life coach with a goon hand. Ex-convict turned motivational speaker, okay? I slap folks in their face with their issues, okay? I don't use these even though I'm nice with them. I'm real nice with them, okay? So this is what I'm trying to tell you, homie. It ain't hostility, man. It's realness, okay? I ain't finna smile and shake and fake. You understand me? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in there and shake and bake, but when I'm done, I'm gonna make you into a better man, and that's what, I, that's what I'm here to do, basically. I'm here to build people up. I'm gonna break you down, and then I'm gonna build you back up. Now, I but understand now, obviously... Oh, well, I mean, real quick, before we go to another question, uh, you already, right out of the gates, the moment you got out of prison, you started shaping lives for the better. What would you say was your greatest success story? What's somebody who really was on the wrong path that you were able to turn them in the right direction? You know, I'm glad you asked me that, that question, you know, because believe it or not, my first, one of my most successful things happened actually in juvenile hall, okay? Um, oh, wow. I, an early yeah. story. Early start, and it was like, you know, retrospect, I look back and realize that I had, like, I really had a gift, okay? So what I did was, when I was in juvenile hall, I was in there because I, I used to steal cars and strip them down and sell the parts to the Mexicans in my neighborhood. And then, what happened was, okay, I, this, little, this little kid, little Mexican kid named Twiggy, got put off in juvenile hall with me. Now, I was in, I was in juvenile hall with some hardened criminals, heard me, okay? Right, and, this right. when, and this was when I learned... The greatest accomplishment was learning the true meaning and the true power of obsession, okay? And just give me a minute and catch my breath because it's a very touching moment for me. You know, a lot of people look at obsession as a negative thing, but obsession is not negative. It's what we choose to obsess about, okay, that makes obsession negative. So Twiggy gets put off in there for some shoplifting. Now, he in here with some hardened criminals. I'm stealing cars. This one's stealing domestic dogs, okay? It's a lot of things going on. And basically what happened was, Twiggy's parents could have got him out of juvie, but they didn't. They thought it was good for him. They thought it would toughen him up, okay? They didn't raise a finger. People are calling. They didn't raise a finger, you know what I'm saying, to get him out. And Twiggy, he wouldn't shower. He would never shower. He would never sleep. I would see him, and he would be smelling like a Duran Duran video. I'd be like, Twiggy, why do you smell so bad? He'd be like, man, I'm afraid to take a shower because if I go in the shower, I'm going to get raped. I don't want to get raped. He would sit in corners and cry about getting raped. He was obsessed with the idea of getting raped. So sure. then I said, I said, Twiggy, Twiggy, you got to take a shower. Some point he said, no. I wake up in the morning and he had bags on his eyes. He's 14 years old with bags on his eyes. I'd say, Twiggy, why do you look like a Mexican Benjamin Button? And he'd be like, I'm afraid to sleep because if I go to sleep, I'm going to get raped. And he was just obsessed with getting raped. What do you think happened to Twiggy? Besides well, questioning I, I, you on your Benjamin Button reference? <laughs> I'm sorry? I, I would imagine, I would imagine that, that maybe his obsession with not getting raped would ironically put him in a position where he eventually got raped. Is that what happened? Well, actually, I was the first one to fuck him, too. But the point <laughs> of it is, that we, was able to, we, we was able to use this example, okay? This was an opportunity for me to demonstrate to him how his obsessions had worked against him. And that was really the beginning of my life coaching career. 
It pink. This next question comes in from Blue in the Gold State, who writes, My husband and I had a son in December and bought a house in January. I lost my job in February. Clearly, the business I started and that my husband now operates produces enough revenue to support us, which is good as I'm having trouble finding a job. I have a bachelor's in business administration, but I seem to be overqualified for half the positions and lack the requisite experience for the rest. Not only am I struggling with not being a breadwinner, a position I'm accustomed to, but I'm stressed that I feel that the new obligations, a.k.a. house and baby, we need extra income for security. I love being home with my son, but it all adds up to bouts of postpartum depression, and I'd really like to be out of this low spot. Sincerely, Blue in the Gold State. Tijuana, how can you help this lovely lady? Blue in the Gold State, the first thing I want to say is th these are the kinds of questions that excite me the most, okay? And I also want to say congratulations on your baby. Hopefully it was a boy. Um, there's a couple of things that crossed my mind when I heard your question. The first thing is, this is your calling. This is your time. They are making you into the hybrid that you are ready to be. They don't want to accept you because of the fact that you are what? Overqualified. Yet, yeah. you've, got, you've got a degree. You have an understanding of how business works. We are living in an era, ladies and gentlemen, of the self-made entrepreneur. You have no choice at this point but to consider entrepreneurial efforts. Now, that doesn't mean that you are above any job. The first and foremost, your priorities are to feed that beautiful baby child. That's the first thing you got to do, okay? The next step is whatever the situation is, is to carve out the time necessary to involve and to, to apply yourself in a way that is going to assure you that you are utilizing your brain and your ability to its maximum. Now, what does that mean for you? The first thing it means for you is, if the baby daddy ain't paying child support, you need to get in his house. If the baby <laughs> daddy's in the house, he need to raise his goddamn income like a snappity, okay? You heard me, okay? Yeah. Ain't no Peter Parker Peppers, not on this watch. And lastly, like I said, what I want to see you do is stop with the pity parties. Believe me when I'm telling you this, okay? Blue in the gold state. Stop with the pity parties, because I'm telling you right now, it's a counterproductive cycle that's going to lead you down into a world of hurt, and it will create an impression on your child who will grow up believing that pity parties are okay. Nah, pull them bootstraps up, okay? I ain't saying you got to go out there and do nothing foul, okay? But pull them bootstraps up, man. Get that daddy to play that child support, you heard me? You know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do, but make sure whatever you're doing, you carving out time to plan your next success. Uh, now, now, Tijuana, uh, you've, you've obviously seen a lot of people who have walked the wrong path in life, and you talked about how a parent can influence that. Um, if you can just, just and, and not to be a, a downer, but just read out for me like 15, 16 years down the road, what is this young, uh, young son going to be turning to if uh, he only has a mother and a father that are consistently throwing these depressing pity parties for themselves? Most of the time, if, 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 a, if a child is in that type of situation, the ideal prototype for an individual like that would be Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> okay. Well, but I mean, at least then there's a multi-million, one of the highest grossing films of all time in his future. You know, I mean, Saved absolutely. was okay. Oh, absolutely. Look, look, don't get, don't get it wrong. I'm not saying that depressed people can't be successful. Okay. Sure. I mean, this, look, I mean, look around people. Okay. I mean, one of the, one of the most impressive people I've seen in a long time. It's been a while since I've actually seen someone who was actually successful and well-rounded, and I have to give my credit to Antoine Dotson. So That's it, true. A man, That's true. A man, a man of all seasons then, a renaissance. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Most of us are depressed. Look, look. the bottom line is, is this, okay? This, this idea of perfection doesn't exist, okay? The bottom line, and this is going to answer, I'm going to go back and answer a few other questions in this one, okay? Look, Good. man. Go ahead. Yes. You know what? Look, man, it ain't no it ain't no mystery, okay, that Einstein put a squiggly wiggly in somebody else's bigoty, okay? It ain't no mystery. Look, it's a lot of the people in this game that you think are phenomenal. We are thinking of them as phenomenal because of the fact that we don't know their personal shit, okay? We just know or we remember their legacy. We remember what they left behind. We remember the good that they did because by nature, that's just the kind of motherfuckers we is as people. You heard me? So Yes. What I'm trying to explain, okay, in the most wholesome way possible, is that, look, you're going to make mistakes. And yes, you know what I'm saying? You're going to do some oil checks you weren't supposed to do, you know? All I'm saying is wipe the slick off your stick, you know what I'm saying? And keep it moving in the positive direction. 
Don't beat All yourself right. up for making mistakes because real men make mistakes, okay? Well, and, that, and I think that's, a, that's an important thing that a lot of people don't realize is that failure is an important and integral part of success. You can't achieve success without having failure along the way. And, and that's kind of what intrigues me about the next question we got because it seems like this guy doesn't even have any problems. This is from a guy named Sean. It says, I'm 25 and I finished college. I have a well-paying job. I've paid off all my debts. My life is stable, but I would like to go back to school and get a master's maybe, or even a PhD. My question is, should I throw away my current stable life to go back into debt to school now or wait for better economic conditions and save money by trying for more advanced degrees in a few years? While my current job is fine, it is a bit boring. Wild card, third option, start my own business, but I just don't feel like I have enough experience for that. Sean? Sean, is that his name? Yeah, Sean. Sean, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, young man, okay? First of all, we're in a situation where whether you want to accept it or not, okay, any job at this state that's paying your bills is a pretty decent job, okay? But the reality of it is, is a job is just a modern job, heard me? which basically means any time, you know what I'm saying, this, you know what I'm saying, this white man in the upper office decide he don't want no more working for him, you know what I'm saying, you pretty much on your jacks. You heard me? It happens. That's right. It sure does. You know what I'm saying? And please don't get it twisted. When I say niggas, I ain't referring to black folks, man. Let me tell you something. I lived in the hood, and one of the most intimidating niggas I ever met was Asian, okay? Everybody was scared. <laughs> they used to call him Bruce Black Lee. Anyway, <laughs> the point that I'm making is, is that you got to understand something, Sean. You really don't have any status whatsoever. You have no security whatsoever, which seems to be your concern as long as you are working for another individual, okay? And the only experience you will ever get as an entrepreneur is by being an entrepreneur. It's simple as that. Now, good for you. You did all the things your mom and daddy told you to. You went and got to class, went and got to school, grades good, and got you a good little job. But notice, you ain't happy now, huh? All I'm telling you is, man, you're going to go back to school and get that master to serve another master. Fuck all that. Start your business. Start making, if you're going you're gonna to make some mistakes, make them for your damn self. That's all now, I'm saying. It sounds like, Tijuana, you're, uh, you're, you're suggesting that he might have some unresolved anger uh, toward his parents who may be uh, putting him in this situation. Do you suggest he maybe confront them? And if he does, what should he say to them? Look, man, you ain't got to say to your parents. Say thank you for putting me through college, you know what I'm saying? And thank you for making me do all the things that you made me do. And then you need to get on your own shit, man. Let that other shit go. Let me tell you something right now. I'm going to say this. All y'all people out there that's mad at your folks, okay? Because I could have been mad at my mama. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I told you when I, when I was eight years old, my uncle tried to put his finger in while I was asleep. But I caught him, right? <laughs> you know, funny enough, right, you actually right. did mention that earlier. Yeah, yeah you did. Now, you did. Now, now, let me tell you something, okay? My mom ain't say nothing. My uncle went off. And then my uncle went and pressed charges, and that was actually my first trip to juvie, okay? Then my uncle and my mama went off, and that's, and that's how my little sister was born. Now, the point that I'm making is, is that I could be holding a grudge on my mama, and for a long time, me and my mama, we didn't talk. Hurt. But then what we realized, what I realized is that, damn, my mama was probably a better parent to me than her mama was to her. You heard me? And then I realized that her mama's mama had a mama. And then her mama's mama had a mama who had a mama. You heard me? So if you're going to start blaming mom, you're going to have to go back and get with the cavemen. You heard me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you, yeah. if, you, if, you got, if you got time to do that, I can use some interns around the damn office. That's well, There we go. Okay. If you're planning on yeah. time traveling back to yell at cavemen, then Tijuana, as you, uh, you know, you can collate some copies for him if you'd like. Uh, real quick, Tijuana, I just want to go through. These are some of the real-time at replies that are coming into your account, at Tijuana Jackson on Twitter. Real Dude says, you inspire me to do great things. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, a real horse boy has to say, you are a defining moment in NSFW show history. Uh, also, uh, Big Kane says, I'm loving this right now. Hashtag Mexican Benjamin Button. Blah, ha, 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 ha. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, there we go. Uh, we have actually one question that's coming in. This is Cameron 401. It says, I'm six, uh, six foot four and as white as it gets, are there any gangs in jail that fit me? So this one, not so much a live question on how to get back on track, but let's just say he ends up in the clink. Uh, what gang should he affiliate with right off the bat? Give me that description one more time. Six foot four and white as it gets, an alabaster man. Okay. You know what? I remember one time... I remember when I was serving in Broward County out in Florida, 
I remember that they 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 had this set like they they call themselves the Seven Foot Albinos, and sure. what they yeah it, it was a gang in there. They was cold blooded. Now why they call them that was because of the fact they was all real pale, and you couldn't see them coming at you when it was real bright outside. So you'd be in the yard, you know what I'm saying? And these cats, you know what I'm saying, as big as they was, you couldn't see them. They was like ghosts. You heard me? Yeah. No, I'm at, so, I'm in Broward County now. Uh, it's where oh, I live, and and that, that is absolutely true. They will roam around a public parking lot. And you will not know that they're up on you if, if it's if it's high noon. That is, uh, they, that is absolutely. Are they true. are they are they riffing on some kind of like supernatural angle? Like maybe they if you do see them, you think they're like a white ghost, so you can't really tell what's going on. No, Brian, well, that's not. ridiculous. No, you know okay. you know. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that's ridiculous. But the what you <laughs> you said when you, they get lost in the sun because they're so white. It's not ridiculous. <laughs> Right. It's a simple fact. It's, it's a simple fact. Everybody, everybody know. It's a simple fact that everybody know when in the sunlight, albinos can't see you and you can't see them. I thought I thought albinos not were unless not the unless sun. you move. They're like a T Rex. Like if you move, the sun will glint in a certain way. But if you stand absolutely still, listen, Brian. It's science fact. Dude, listen, don't, Brian. Don't, I, and I want to say this too, bro. Listen, hey, hey, listen to this, okay? Listen, man. Well, what's the kid's name that asked the question? Because I really want, I, I really want, I really want to talk to him. What, what's the kid's that name? That was Cameron. That Cameron. Cameron 401 on Twitter, and, and he hits you up at your uh, your Twitter account at Tijuana Jackson. I'm gonna say something, Cameron. Listen to me, and I'm telling you the honest to God truth. Okay, I lied earlier. Okay, I lied about something. I'm not gonna say what it was, but I'll just basically <laughs> say this. Okay, when you're in prison, it's a lot of well endowed prisoners that's targeting the biggest man. Okay. So let me tell you something. If you would end up in prison, I'm promising you right now, you're going to become a target, okay? And you never know. You could get took fam style. And if you get took fam style, that's the end of it. Did you say fam style? Fam style. It's called fam style. style. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, sodomy. Sodomy, you know what I'm saying? Sodomy in the missionary position. Right, okay. <laughs> like, like, like a family man would. This one comes in from uh, the email, of course. I'm sorry, uh, you can, you have can an interview with Brian and Justin right now on NSFW. You're gonna have, you have to call me back. Look, I want to help you. Okay. Well, what? Speak up. <laughs> what do you mean? What I just call you? I don't have your phone number, so I can't call you. Jesus. I'm hey, sorry, I do want to just just real quick, because we are on on uh, the the uh, uh, Twit Network. What kind of phone are you using? What, what what smartphone do you prefer? Okay, well I got I, I always I always maintain two things. Okay, for a lot of times people y'all heard the situation what happened to me when when I got the phone call where they called me and they told me that I won the bamboo wood block that came with the, the Ginsu the, the Ginsu night set with the bamboo wood block and then when yeah. I went to pick they, they put handcuffs on me. You heard about that, right? Right, okay. yeah, right. of course, who didn't? Right, I had some outstanding warrants. So I always make sure that I keep a pager, okay? That's for them <laughs> okay. enough people. If, if, if I don't know you, you know what I'm saying, you call on my number, you know what I'm saying, I know I can check you from here. This right here, what I'm using, this is what I'm using. I'm using a Droid X. And simply for the simple fact, look, I know a lot of people out there, I'm not going to talk bad about the iPhone. I'm not going to say that, okay? But the thing is, I'm a little more technically savvy. A lot of my clientele is developed via the internet. So what this allows me to do is create the phone that I need for my business. So as you can see, I keep a lot of my clients right at my fingertips. And as a result of that, I'm able to call up their files and identify their needs before they even start speaking, okay? So you for me, the Droid X is what I use. No, well, I'm sorry. It sounded like you said you identify their needs before they even start speaking. How do you do that? Well, because of the fact that, like I said, we have an enormous database here at the Tijuana Jackson's Life Management Systems of all our Twitter followers. We are constantly scrolling and reading their tweets. And by doing so, we get a little bit of insight into the individuals that are calling us once we can identify them by their Twitter handle. Okay? I'm not That's sure I'm not that's, that's revolutionary technology. I mean, that's the kind of thing that could be life changing for the. I guess that's the whole purpose of it is you want to change their lives, right? I'm here to change lives, but I'm also here to show people, okay, that that life coaching is not some incredible science. It's simple as this. Look, man, you get a swift kick in your ass, okay? You are gonna do one of two things, okay? You either gonna limp away or you are gonna fight the back. And I'm trying to get you to fight back because the minute you start fighting, I'm going to take that fight energy and put it where it needs to be so you can get that income up. And the next thing you know, I'm listening to your goddamn seminars. Heard me?
That's true. Uh, yeah, I'll tell That's you, true. you, you should you should be on all uh, all about Android uh, with with that uh, with that kind of that kind of. Uh, Actually, yeah, that technology savvy. would yeah. be phenomenal. We definitely got to get you on. I mean, I'm assuming if you're available to appear on other Twit Network shows, I think it would be phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Jace, Jason okay. Howell and Eileen Rivera would love to have you on their on their program. Uh, I got another real one lined up here. Actually, yeah. this is. Uh, uh, did you already do Adam Adams one, Justin? I uh, come if to it's you still seeking in there. Wisdom. No, I did not, Mr. I am a 23-year-old yeah. single web developer living in a very conservative community in Pennsylvania. As such, nothing about my life lends me to meeting or interacting with attractive ladies. I work with a bunch of guys and older married women. My entire life I've had so ladies just, approach me rather than approach them. And being that I'm not in college anymore, that seems to be happening less and less. I'm not trying to sound boastful or arrogant here, but ladies tend to find me attractive. Anyway, being a geeky web dude, I tend to clam up whenever I see an attractive girl or start to talk like talk to one. To be quite honest, I ignore them, even if I know without a shadow of a doubt that they are interested in me. So my question is, what is the best pickup line to go at a girl with? Or what is the best way to approach a lady and start up a conversation? Please keep in mind that my motive here is not to have a one night stand, but to begin a relationship. Seriously. Thanks so much for the help, Adam. Adam, I'm writing you a song right this minute. Just give me a finish. I'm just finishing up the last lesson. I'm writing a song. I tell you what, for you. While, while, you're, while you're writing a song, while you're writing a song, why don't we take a moment to thank our other sponsors, right, Justin? Absolutely. Uh, Brian, listen, we're getting, we're getting a lot of uh, really, really, really great uh, life advice here. And it reminds me of so many cinematic tales uh, about learning lessons. Not unlike, let's say, Robin Williams' Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, you know where where everybody learned a lot, and 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 a father's sacrifice to uh to really teach his own children some some lessons that they would have otherwise learned, and maybe he skipped out on a little early. About cross dress, it was that? it was a lesson on how to cross dress. He said it's okay for you to parade around like a middle aged woman and be a heterosexual father. Yeah, it was Absolutely. important message. Exactly. That instead of maybe setting up some regular visitation rights, I'd rather you illegally like misrepresent Mr. myself. Mr. Mr. Jackson, how can I help you? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Tijuana is Tijuana is on the line, but but we're we're talking about Netflix sure. over here. Absolutely. You know what's great yeah. about Netflix? So so that, Netflix. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say what I love about Netflix is that you get thousands of movies, and yes, they do have hundreds of distribution centers all over the United States. Yes, you do get physical DVDs by mail in one business day. Yes, they have a whole bunch of Blu-ray titles, so you can get HD awesomeness. But the reason I love Netflix is because you can watch any of the thousands and thousands of television shows and movies on their Netflix instant streaming library. If you go to netflix.com slash twit, netflix.com slash twit, sign up for your free 30-day trial. Now think about it. If you wanted to get your value out of this, how much television could you watch in 30 days? You could watch all of Lost. You could watch yep. all of Sons of Anarchy. You could watch all of any number of other shows on your HBOs or your Showtimes or any of those awesome networks. You can watch so much television that it'll make your eyes bleed and won't cost you a dime, along with all kinds of top-notch movies over at Netflix. What, what would you watch, Justin? Well, I'll tell you what, and, and uh, I'm trying to look and see if some of these are on here, but I know that simultaneously, I, I've really lately had the urge to watch uh, you know, the television series uh, Weeds, uh, No Ordinary Family, and, and the film The 40-Year-Old Virgin. And I can get all of those off Netflix using my 30-day trial. Currently, I know on the instant streaming, I've been watching The Larry Sanders Show. I just watched Brick uh, for, for Ryan Connolly's Watch Tell program on Revision 3. It was absolutely fantastic. It's my favorite service in the world, and it's one that I use every single day. And you can too, folks. Netflix.com slash twit. Absolutely. I'm sorry, do, do we, uh, 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 back to TJ. TJ, are you still there, buddy? I'm sorry. Hold on, one young, young man. I'm sorry. I'm just working with a client. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Please. Oh, good. I, I'm sorry. Uh, when look, we this left is, you, we look, had... This is just proof. This is just proof. You see the number? 310-363-7145. Yes. Contact me. Hit me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. It don't matter. If you ain't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'm probably going to diss you. But anyway, the point of the matter is, <laughs> is that I actually talk to my clients. We're in a deep discussion. I, I, can, can, can you call me back? 
I, th I think that's totally appropriate. If somebody doesn't okay. care enough, well, look, uh, look at your YouTube show. I don't know why why they you know should bother to ask you for advice. But if if you remember, TJ, we were talking about somebody who was looking for the best pickup line to go at a girl with. Somebody who was looking for a meaningful relationship, not just a one night stand. Somebody who tends to be shy with women. And as we left for the break, you mentioned that you were actually writing a song for him. I actually was, and I think I may have actually spoken to the gentleman on the phone. And I'm, this is what I have so far. Okay, it starts right. like this. I think I'm going to use this in my next seminar, which I'm going to title Stop Giving Compliments and Start Getting Laid, okay? Because that's the first <laughs> issue is that a lot of times... This is a, can, can we announced that, that we actually have the exclusive on that, that Tijuana Jackson's next tour will be called Stop Giving Compliments, Start Getting Laid, the tour. Absolutely. And, and I believe that that's the problem, okay? Now, now this is what I'm going to say is a lot of us are spending time trying to be nice. A lot of us are spending so much time trying to be accepted okay, that we are accepting people who haven't warranted that. So what I'm saying is ah. just because of the fact that she looks good doesn't give her the green light. You heard me? So That's she got to earn your green light, too. Now, she may pretend to be not interested, but if your game is right, and that's what I'm writing a song for right now, that's what I got so far. You ready? Go. Lesson number one, your confidence is the king, and with confidence, you ain't got to take your ass to the gym like them till you want to show you swagger like a pimp. It's kind of hard to ignore you when your aura do the talking for you. Let that dumb nigga buy the drink. You take that time to think. Club full of See, that's a lot of pink. And don't rush the flow. You can pull a lot of holes. You just got to listen to the shit that Tijuana know. 99 problems. Be at the bottom. Never sentimental, baby. Don't confuse me with common. Miller Light and Top Ramen is hardy and economic. I'm feeling on the ass. I'm just going through with pockets. And never blow your money on an outfit. You got to learn how to distinguish between a bed and a couch, chick. And if she don't give you head, she ain't about sh Might as well go on and kick out. Yeah, I think I'm going to use that. Mm -hmm. Hey, there we go. Tell you what, that was that was a fantastic guy. It was amazing. That was the Absolutely. maybe the greatest live improv advice rap we've ever had in the history of NSFW show. We've had a lot of them in the past, but that one blows it away. Chat room is freaking out right now. I am the winner of this lame ass podcast game. Now All right, I think we got time for just a couple more questions, and we're going to have to wrap things up, right, Justin? Uh, yeah, no, because we still do have our guests for the uh, summer music series uh, coming up in, in, a, in a few minutes. So maybe one more question. Brian, do you see any in there that stick out to you? Um, uh, well, you know what? This one's not really much of a question, and I'm sure you deal with this. You deal with people from all walks of life. You have some people who are good and effective at phrasing their questions. You got other people that just seem to have given up in their soul. This one is kind of depressing to me. It's as though it was scrawled on a piece of paper, a desperate plea for help. Cameron just says, I am bad at everything ever. Fix that, please. What do you say okay. to someone like that, TJ? Well, this is what you say. It's exactly how we started this entire discussion, okay? Clearly, his self-image has led him to believe that he is bad at everything. Now, yes. see, this is the interesting thing. Someone has probably convinced him of that. What sets the standard for bad and good? Who sets the standard for bad and good? I might think it sucks. This person might think it's great, okay? Believe it or not, one of the best jobs I ever got was from a midget. And believe it or not, I wasn't attracted to her either, okay? Now we see our... I don't see believe it. <laughs> what? He's I, accusing I, you of a liar. He says away. he doesn't I believe I would have never thought that. Never thought what? That, I mean, that, that would have been the best ever, and you weren't even attracted to her. That, it's counterintuitive to me. I agree, because you couldn't even get a little hands around it, but the point of the matter is, <laughs> is that my preconceived notions were thwarted in that experience. And that's yeah. what I'm trying to tell this young man, is that he had these preconceived notions of being bad at everything, okay? Well, the reality of it is, is that you don't know what you're good and bad at because you've already made an assumption that you're bad. So you haven't given, you haven't opened yourself up to being good. You heard me? Right. That's what made me the lover that I am today. Okay? And must have looked like right one of those, para like those parasite suckers are on the side of a whale. Because of you know, Yeah. Well, yeah, well, totally, well, no, totally. it's, it's, it's for the simple fact that, well, first off, I'm not sure if you've ever been in a, when I was finishing up my Navy SEAL training in, um, in, in the Philippines, okay, okay. Uh, me and three of my closest cohorts, we used to actually eat them parasite suckers, and believe it or not, that's some good flesh. Well, hey, I'll tell you what, listen, you were, you were if nothing but full with, with absolute usable knowledge, Tijuana. 
Absolutely, yeah. I mean, in fact, the Philippines was amazing. Um, I remember, uh, I mean, those very same cohorts, um, you know, I met this young Filipino fellow by the name of, uh, what was his name? Uh, Mila, Mila, Mila. He Mila. was a very intelligent young man. Um, me and three of my closest cohorts, we actually used to, uh, we used to uh, use his mother in what's called a sala, sala. That's called a, uh, that's Filipino for room with dirt floor. And, <laughs> um, well, I kind of so got you, you and Mila's mama me in the sala. Go ahead. As the Bible says, it's so a man speaks, so he is in his heart. Okay. And so right. it's not a matter of religion. It's a matter of philosophy. Okay. Cause you only got two kinds of people on this planet. You got philosophers and you got Vikings choose a side. And if you're a philosopher, you're thinking for the long term. Okay. And no. if you're thinking for the long term, a defeatist attitude is not going to get you very far. Bottom line is, and what I'm trying to say is, if you continue to believe that you are bad at everything, you will be bad at everything. And if you continue to believe that you are good at everything, you will be good at everything. Then, now, this is amazing. I know we're short on time, and I love this analogy. You're saying everyone on this planet can be separated. Are you a philosopher or are you a Viking? Absolutely. Absolutely. I am a philosopher, okay? okay. Uh, a, a philosopher is an individual who has invested in the belief system that there is, for lack of a better term, an accountant of sorts that dwells throughout. And this accountant keeps tabs on the deposits you make into the universe. As a result of that, we tend to think and behave in a more long-term perspective. A Viking, on the other hand, that's how you get people like Lindsay Lohan. I'm sorry, Lindsay Lohan is a, is a Viking is what you're saying? I believe so. Um, I have a friend that I, play, I, I, that, I, that I play ice hockey with from time to time, and he sure. had a get-together at his house, and we were over there, and Lindsay Lohan accidentally bumped him and knocked his drink onto the floor. So, so, so anyone who acts violently, anyone who wrongs another person for short-term gain, that, that, that is a Viking compared to the well, philosopher. Not, not necessarily. It's a long -term. Not, not necessarily. But her behavior... When he taught, when he brought it to her attention, she turned around and bit him. Okay, right. Well, yeah, that's here. definitely that's definitely the behavior of a Viking. She didn't have a beard or anything, did, did she? Long red hair. No, it was Lindsay. I can guarantee you that it was Lindsay. Because I'll tell you right now, she was. I'm gonna tell you right now, Lindsay. She was about it. She was. She was. Man, she was pale. I mean, she was on some pale. Shit. The only thing that's saving her life in them goddamn freckles. But here's the point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. God uh, bless them Irish jeans. Heard me. But here's the point. This is the point that I'm trying to make. I'm simply saying this, man, is that if you think from a long-term perspective, you have chosen the philosopher's side whether you want to or not. And if you think on a very short-term perspective or short-term behavioral patterns, you have then chosen the side of the Viking. And believe it or not, we can teeter-totter. In certain instances, like the gentleman who asked the question earlier today, whether or not he should be going out and like cheating and messing around and chasing more, more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep it PC for your fucking listeners. Thank you. Thank you. We oh, appreciate, no, we doing appreciate that. that. The last yeah, three yeah. minutes of the episode. No, you're very welcome. You know, he's a good example of someone who's having Viking thoughts with a philosopher's mindset. You see the conflict? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, look. Uh, we, absolutely. We, 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 we got to wrap things up because we have our musical guest coming up. But we, first of all, everybody right now in the chat room, everybody watching live has one question in their mind. How can I reach out and have my voice heard by Tijuana Jackson? Because they want their lives shaped just like everyone else that we've talked about the show. What is the first, second, and third best way for people to reach you? Okay. The first best way for you to reach Tijuana Jackson and truthfully, I mean truthfully, be moved and change your life is to simply hit me on Twitter at Tijuana Jackson. Okay? You got you can it. Also, you can also reach me, Okay. On Facebook, I answer a lot of questions on Facebook. In fact, I spend most of my time in my office answering some of the dumbest questions I've ever heard in my life, okay? <laughs> you can also right. reach me, if you'd like to, on YouTube because I yeah, do because make specific that's... videos to the individuals with the most interesting questions. That's how I answer those questions is yeah, I provide you... them with visual so content. Video Sometimes questions can... Do, do you answer video questions? Like, can somebody record themselves with, with talking about their concern and then you can record a video response? Is that how it works? 
I encourage it simply for the simple fact that it's when I can see your face and see your facial expressions, I can understand the level of torment to which you've been molested. And when I say molested, it don't mean that somebody went and jammed their finger off in your ass. You could be psychologically molested. You heard me? Sure. Of course. Not, not like what happened the with mind, you and your uncle. The mind, when you're young, the mind works. The mind is like a, it's like a, the, the mind works like a, a, a young Madonna. It's going to suck whatever you put in front of it. Heard me? So <laughs> what you have to understand is, a lot of times, the young mind is so influential, it's been exposed to a lot of things, okay, and that have made impressions that aren't necessarily true. So when I right. can see it, I can see your self-image, you know, I can really get a better idea of who you are and what you are and how better to assess your issue. Now, the last place that you can get me, which is probably the most phenomenal place on the planet, is TijuanaJackson.com. You go to the website, yes. it never runs out of material. I'm constantly in touch with my followers. In fact, because of you, I'm now inspired to release my latest video, okay? But you're going to have to come to TijuanaJackson.com, hit me on Twitter, at Tijuana Jackson, hit me on Facebook, TJ Can Help, and you got to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see the video, heard me? All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, we yeah, very yeah, rarely Tijuana. do this. On, well, I was going to say, Justin, that we, wait, wait, we very rarely thing. do this. We very rarely do this, but what I'm going to ask is every single person watching live, if you enjoyed the antics of one, uh, I mean, the advice of one Tijuana Jackson, I would like you right now to tweet out to at Tijuana Jackson, tell him thank you for the science of triumph. That's Absolutely. what we need to get and, and put a NSFW show on there. Let Tijuana Jackson know that we appreciate somebody of his importance taking time out of his busy schedule to join us here on NSFW show. And I understand we got a little bit of time left for our special musical guest for our, yeah, so musical guest for our summer music series. Right, Justin? I wish there was a website to catalog that. Uh, this musical guest, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am very, very happy to bring a man onto this caliber, although it is under some sad, sad tidings. Uh, as many of you know, wrestling legend uh, Randy Poffo, better known as the Macho Man Randy Savage, passed away last Friday. And uh, so to, to commemorate not only his life, but also the majesty that is wrestling intros, we brought on Adam Hackey. He uh, has a YouTube account that is a Knight W11. That is the number 11, where he, uh, on a classical piano, plays through wrestling themes. He's uh, nice enough to come on, playing the WW theme medley on the NSFW show live for the summer music series. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Hackey. Take it away, Adam. Thank you. 
the guy. Uh, here's the my uh, Justin is the crazy uh, wrestling fan. Now the question is to you, Justin: Were you able to identify all of the themes in there? Because the chat room had every single one of them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was watching the chat room, so it'd be impossible to tell if I if I left my own devices would have picked them out. But I picked out, uh, yeah, ninety ninety percent of them. Uh, Adam, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, now, just real quick, uh, let everybody know where they can find uh, your stuff and where they can subscribe to you. Uh, yeah, I have uh, my own YouTube channel. Uh, my YouTube channel is NightW11, uh, just like uh, Knight, as in, uh, as you see on the bottom of the screen, kind of like a, a knight in shining armor, W11. Just go to my YouTube channel. Uh, just, just type in the search bar, NightW11. You'll see, uh, you'll see me there. Uh, subscribe to my channel. If you're a wrestling fan, you love wrestling themes, whether they're the new ones on WWE or TNA, I do TNA themes, WCW, uh, ECW, Ring of Honor. I I basically been taking requests all summer, uh, not all summer, but uh, for almost a year now. So, uh, and I've, I'm learning new themes as I go. So uh, I've been taking requests and I'm trying to get to as many as possible. So I'm very busy. And I also do uh, wrestling themes on Mario Paint Composer, which is a... Uh, a uh, composing program based on Super Mario. All the notes are Super Mario icons, so uh, it's pretty <laughs> cool. So, so uh, I've been doing that too. I've been taking requests. Do I do everything by ear? I don't. Uh, I don't have any uh, sheet music that I read off, but I just kind of listen to it and just put it in. But I have started making uh, started making sheet music for the piano themes, and uh, I kind of been sending them over to whatever users uh, want any. So. Uh, just giving me a new hobby that's uh, been really taking off for me. So if they uh, want to reach me there at uh, Night W11 on YouTube, then feel free to subscribe to me. So. Well, I tell you, Adam, that is fantastic. There's a lot of people that are screaming and yelling for for you to do, uh, you know, the, the themes of their favorite wrestlers. And I'm sure that if they go on, either you've already done it or you will take the request uh, as best you can. But thank you so, so much for coming on. That was fantastic, man. Thank you. All right. Well, Brian, I think we've had we've had a pretty epic episode here. Uh, let me tell you, we all learned something. We learned a bit about <laughs> how to achieve, to uh, overcome some, some, you know, increasing adversity, whether it be a gas station or at the hands of your uncle or at the hands of a midget in prison. Uh, I think we learned a lot about Tijuana Jackson, and I hope everyone out there is making sure to tweet Tijuana Jackson at Tijuana Jackson and let them know how much you appreciated him coming on the show. And of course, you can tweet me at Schwood, that's at S-H-W-O-O-D, or at Justin R. Young for J Robert Young. I, what else? Is that it? Are we out? I think I think that, listen, Bri, uh, well, what can you do? If we did a solid hour with Tijuana Jackson and then hurt eight wrestling themes combined into a medley, I think we're pretty much tapped out. What else can we say? Well, then I, I, I'll tell you what we say is we say Jim or B, the MF and music and take us out here because that's it for this episode of NSFW. We love each and every one of you. Best show ever. Woo! Woo! See you next Tuesday. Hey, you Tijuana Jacks. Holy cow. That was just about the greatest moment of my entire life. Tijuana, that was amazing. You still there? You know, I really thought the musician was incredible, and I, I, I believe that he's got a future. I'm, I'm, you know, look, I'm no Randy Jackson, okay? But I think the kid has some chops. I'm definitely going to subscribe to his YouTube channel, and I might even get him to make my theme song. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, Adam, oh, would, you, would, you, would you like oh, to make a theme oh, song oh. for Tijuana Jackson? Oh, right. I've made, uh, I've actually made different intros for other different users, so I could, I could think of something. I'm, I'm pretty good at uh, rap songs if you want to put a rap beat to it, so feel free. Well, well I'm, like, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say you have to make up the song on the fly, but like, what does your heart tell you as far as like a general vibe or riff? Like, like if you're going to kind of work out the basics right now, what would a, what would a TJ song sound like? I don't know what uh, types of, uh, you know, Whatever he prefers, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I can't judge right off the bat, but uh, I don't know. Just something kind of just, I don't know. If you just listen to more mainstream uh, 
rap music. I'm thinking, I'm thinking more of kind of like a beat from like a Little Wayne song. You know, well, good, 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 something good, 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 on the lines good. of that. You know. I mean, to be quite frank, you know, yes, it's true that I do make rap albums. In fact, you can look for my next album, Affirmation Music Volume 1. But mm -hmm. the simple fact is, is that I tend to lean more toward abstract music. Uh, I, I also love a lot of indie pop. You know, one of my favorite groups is Cake. Okay, yes, I do listen yeah. to the white boys. You heard me? Yeah. So I just want to let you know that before you make your mistakes of putting me on some rap track, you really need to think <laughs> about it, man. Dig into your catalog and get me one of them themes, you know what I'm saying, like Rocky, okay? Because I will triumph in this month. <laughs> well, there it is. So there you it say, is. Dig, dig into your, your inner Bill Conti there and maybe give him an epic, uh, an epic stirring score, not unlike the, the, the WWE themes that you so, uh, you so, you so well play. But listen, listen to me, young man. I think that you have uh, an exceptional talent. And I think that you're actually onto something that is really great, is that what you're doing is you're playing music and you're forcing us to think. You're, 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 you're making us access areas in our mind that we've left behind. You're making us remember themes. It's beautiful. And I think that you could, I mean, I'm sure you have already, but you could really expound upon this and build an incredible network of followers simply because of the fact that you are as talented as you are and doing what I would like to refer to as a very unique internet game. If you need further advice, you know, 310-363-7145. And like That's I right, said, man. That's right, dude. You know? That's right. Follow me and win one of these T-shirts, homie. All right. All right. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, gentlemen. I know both of you guys have very busy schedules, so we'll let you guys drop off. Thank you again a million times over. It was such a blast to have you guys on. We still have to decide on a name for the show and do the plugs at, at the the opens and closes. But thank you very much, T. Watt and Jackson. I'm sure every I'm sure everybody's writing you on Twitter right now to tell you thank for thank you for being on the show. I will not lie, it's blowing up. But let me just say this. Your health should be your number one priority. Okay? But uh but but what is the brand of cigarette that you've been smoking through the show? Because I don't okay. think there we go, new parts. And look, don't get it twisted, okay? I smoke because it keeps me regular, okay? You know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. Man, I got a six-pack. They, they, they call me the black situation when I was in the joint. 